This is a real show with real people talking about real issues with a real attorney. Now it's time to lawyer up. Today's show is one of my favorite shows. So many people come to court crazy. I've seen people come to court with pajamas on. I've seen people come to court with do-rags on. I've seen people come to court with big signs on their shirt that say, I smoke weed, I get high. So many people do so many crazy things. I was actually in court one time and I was representing a person on a murder charge. I was representing someone on a really serious charge and we went to the trial and we won the trial. The guy that was with me charged with murder, facing the rest of his life in prison, he went home. But the witness, the witness because they were dressed poorly actually got locked up. Had nothing to do with it, didn't get charged with anything, but because of how he was dressed, he got locked up. You know, I started thinking about that thing and I was like, you know what, the way you dress really matters. The way you appear when you go to court, it really matters. So we had to come up with a show to let people know exactly how to dress when you come to court. The courtroom is a professional environment. And believe it or not, I have had people who dress like this when they walked into court. Dress like this. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not how you should dress when you go to court. If you dress like this when you walk into the courtroom, what? you may not walk out of the courtroom. If you dress like this when you go to the courtroom, bring your toothbrush because you might be going to jail. What? What? You do not need to dress like this in the courtroom. In today's show, what we're going to do is we're going to have an image consultant who's going to come in and give us the do's and don'ts of a professional dress so we can know the right way to dress when you come to court. Hopefully we can fix these people up and make them look a little bit better. Stay tuned for more Lawyer Up. Serenity Salon, you saw what the young lady looked like. That is not the way you look when you come to court. So we decided she needed a makeover. You know what? Let's watch while she does this makeover process. Come on, let's go, let's go. How you doing today? What's your name? Good, Tracy Mullins. Miss Mullins, what are you doing today? Because she came in with a lot going on. So what are you going to do to make sure she looks presentable when she goes to court? The first thing we're going to do is get rid of this weave. I'm going to take it down. We're going to relax her. Kind of make sure it's in good condition. After we make sure it's in con good condition, we're going to actually go through and kind of make her look a little better than what she looks right now. I hope so, because when, <laughs> when she came in, I, I saw that. I was like, oh, my God, what is going on? But so many people come to court like that. So how long does it even take to get that hair? See, I don't have any hair, so I don't, you know, I'm, I don't have the same issues. But, well, people that have hair, how long does it even take to get this situation kind of under control? About an hour, hour and a half depends on the shape that's up under this wave. That's what we're worried about. We want to make sure that it's in good condition before we actually do anything to it. We want to see how her scalp is, and once we check the scalp and kind of see what hair the condition is in, then we can go from there and kind of make it look a whole lot better. So you're going to make her look better when we come back and check her out. She ain't going to look like she came in. Okay, okay. <laughs> look, let's go talk over here. Let's go some more people getting their hair done. Now, I haven't had my hair done in forever. I mean, I used to have haircuts and stuff, but now I don't have any hair. Let me come on the side. Back up. All right. So, uh, how are you doing today? Hi, how are you? All right, what's your name? I'm Shawnika Lovick. Lovick. Are you are you the owner of this great place, Serenity Salon? Yes, I am. Yes, so, I am. How long have you been working here? I've been working here for two years now, okay. and I've been doing a stylist for 20 years. For 20 years? Yes. You've been styling hair since you was three years old? No, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. 
Thank you. Well, look, let me, let me ask you a couple of questions. If someone wanted to actually come here and actually get involved in getting their, their hair situation fixed or they want to get a perm or whatever else y'all do, what, what do y'all even do? Perms? We um, do it all. We do a, a various number of things. We start from A to Z. If you got it, we got it. So could you do anything for, for my situation here? You got some weave for me. Don't play because I will put some weave in this and hair and cut it. All right. So what is there a phone number here or, or the address? How can someone get here if they wanted to get here for uh, the address is 325 Clifton Street right here in Greenville, North Carolina. And if you want to call us, the number is 252-702-1875. And if we're not answering, leave a message and we'll call you right back. Well, look, y'all, there you have it. This whole situation is about to get addressed. I'm excited to see what happens on that hair. You should have uh, Did y'all see it? You saw how it was, it was a lot going on. I'm confident that after spending some time at Serenity Salon, they will fix this thing up, and she will look presentable and show you how you should dress when you come to court. We'll be back. Thomas Lynch, No Exit Productions. Regina Sanders with Sanders Photography. I've been in photography business for six years, and the thing that I like most about being a photographer is shooting those special moments that people have together. No Exit Production has been in the business for about 15 years. We cover the gamut when it comes to media production. Uh, we do everything from freelance to ESPN and Fox Sports to our own documentaries and video productions. I love doing weddings family reunions, baby showers, anything that you could possibly imagine that you want to share with someone else. About three years ago, I decided to team up with No Exit Production. It brought my business to another dimension. We now can offer video and photography. When we teamed up with Sanders Photography, it was a perfect fit because we were able to expand our business to photos. you can log on to www.officialnxp.com. Contact Regina Sanders at 252-717-0486 or Thomas Lynch at 252-714-8249. Welcome back to Lawyer Up. We're here with Miss Felicia Price of PSP LLC. I kill your name, girl. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is it called? PSP, PSP Consultant? Yes. LLC. There you go. There you go. So, so how are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? I can't complain. So talk to me. What is an image consultant? What, what, what do y'all do? What is, what is an image consultant? Well, you know, it depends on my clients. Uh -huh. They range from 12 to 112 if necessary. <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> so you, you actually work with people that are 12 years old. What are y'all changing their, their elementary school outfit? <laughs> I mean, what, what, what are you working on? No, not quite. Okay. At 12, it's mostly about your, your self, your image, your, your self-esteem, building that confidence. Okay. Um, there have been studies shown that now kids need to start thinking about their career path as early as middle school. Mm -hmm. So I build vision boards or assist them with building vision boards, which is basically taking paper and um, from magazine clippings or things of that nature and putting them on a board, something visual that they can see every day to help them focus on what their future career goals are. As early as 12? As early as 12. I know people that were like fourth year of college had no idea what they wanted to this do. This is true. So as early as 12. Yes. So, so what else do you do? You help them with the vision boards and things mm -hmm. of that nature, but what do you do on a, a general daily day basis on different types of, of uh, people? On a day to day basis, it, it honestly it ranges um, okay. from facilitating workshops. I've emceed a what not to wear fashion show. I've been on panels. Mm -hmm. I've doing TV. <laughs> <laughs> on, moving up, Greg, moving up. So, so um, for example, what type of activities do you do with a person? If you want a person wants to change their image or they come to you, what type of things are they looking for? What are they doing to, trying to change? Well, typically I mostly partner with colleges, mm -hmm. um, community colleges with their career service center or their leadership office. Right. Um, their student body office, MPHC, any any type of organization that has a large grouping of people okay. um, that are usually juniors or seniors in college that are getting ready to go into the working force. And so with them, we discuss um, 
We do workshops that are geared towards professional etiquette, professional dress, networking, diversity, communication, things like that. If it's an individual, then I sit down with them and find out what exactly are their particular goals and needs, and then I just tailor whatever I need to do to them. So when we talk about image, what, what is image? Is it pretty much the way you dress, the way you look? What, what, what is the image that you've been working on anyway? What, what is it? Well, I will say a lot of it is how you look, okay. which includes not just like how you look genetically, but also how you're dressed. <laughs> I, hope, I, hope, I hope not. <laughs> that we can't control. Some folks don't got a chance to <laughs> You just got to play with the hand you were dealt. Yeah, but, <laughs> but you can still uh, dress appropriately, be properly groomed. Right. It's A lot of it is also part of your nonverbal communication. Okay. Um, communication is like 75% nonverbal. Mm -hmm. So, so much of what someone gathers about you is decided before you even open your mouth. Wow. So a lot of image doesn't have really much to do with what you're saying as much as it does with how you're presenting yourself to the world. Okay. Well, look, this show is about uh, so many crazy things that have happened in court. I've seen people come to court with shirts with weed on it, shirts with the big cuss words on it. I've seen people wear pajamas to court. I've seen guys that have their pants so far down that I'm surprised they can even walk. It's so much craziness that I see. So, so what type of things can we teach these people and help these people about dressing when they come to court? Mm -hmm. Wow, pajamas and court. Pajamas, I've seen, <laughs> almost, almost bathing suits. I'm like, oh wait, you can't dress like that in court. Wow, it's not a pool party. It is, it is <laughs> they're going to jail. But to be <laughs> honest, I feel like if that's happening, it, it's, it has to start maybe with the foundation of understanding, number one, what message are they trying to send? Or right. better yet, even if they have good intentions with their message, what message are people receiving right. with how it is that they're presenting themselves? And especially in a courtroom, I mean, you're standing in front of somebody call the judge. <laughs> so you're going to be judged automatically, which is even more reason why, yes, that's nice if you have a warm and fuzzy personality, if you volunteer every Saturday or whatever, but no one knows that when you're just standing in front of them. Right. And so you need to think about all the good about you and how can you make that a visual, right. basically, presentation. So, I mean, but what can we do to help these people to understand that, look, the way you're dressed is not appropriate. I mean, mm -hmm. if you have someone that comes in your office and they're thinking they're dressed nicely, they're looking good, they got their threads on, what can we do to help them to understand, look, that is not good, that is not good. Right. I mean, if they have, they think they have their hair nice, but they got like 15 colors in it, mm -hmm. but we're like, look, that's not good. What, right. can, what can we do to help them to understand that they are not looking good for a professional establishment such as court? Exactly. And honestly, part of it is starting with that. I never want anybody to think that their self-expression is wrong right. because it's who they are. Right. And that's fine if you uh, work at a job or work someplace where you're allowed to have 15 colors in your hair. <laughs> not <my job>. <laughs> <laughs> right. Not me either. <laughs> but you need to understand when you're going possibly on an interview to a courtroom, things uh -huh. of that nature, you need to just understand how to pull a look together that's professional. And right or wrong, just understand that we live in a world where we are judged. We're judged on how we look. 30 seconds, people give, I think you get 30 seconds to give a first impression. Oof. And so people need to understand that as far as showing them how to do it, I mean, first they need to understand that they're incorrect. Mm -hmm. You can't help somebody who doesn't want help. Okay. So that's first and foremost. And second of all, it is it's showing them examples. If possible, it's whether it's shopping with them. You know, if someone needs me to go with them to help them choose outfits, I will do that. You know, it, it's I, I like to do an exercise where I tell the person to pretend like they own their own business. Okay. And if you own your own business and you're at a point now where you need to start hiring people to work for you, how would you want people out in the world representing you? Okay. And that kind of helps people focus on the importance of professionalism, Flip whether it's off. at work, right, in mm -hmm. the courtroom or whatnot. So. Now, I don't know if you remember seeing some of the, the people that we had earlier today. And we had a guy, we had a girl, and for lack of better words, it, it, it was a hot mess. Hot flame. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, what type of things were, 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 like, wrong with what they had going on? Because one thing you said earlier is they had to understand they were wrong. Right. What type of things were, were wrong with the guy and, and the girl they had going on? Let me just start by saying shower shoes are always wrong <laughs> if you're not in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So that was the first thing I noticed. Again, pajamas are wrong right. if you're not asleep. So, <laughs> I mean, you know, it's kind of just using what we would think is common sense, but people don't know what they don't know, right. you know, and so a lot of it is helping them understand that that type of uh, attire is not appropriate okay. for a courtroom or any time that you're trying to exude a professional image. Right. Um, so, yeah, the shower shoes, the shorts, the, no. Now, if you had... Uh, to come up with some type of list, like a, mm -hmm. a five, you better not do this. A five, never okay. dress like this when you come to court. Five things that are, if you, it's like the five cardinal sins of dressing poorly to court. Okay. What, what would the five major no-nos be? I know I'm putting you on the spot, but what would those okay. five things be? Things you should never do. 
Give them um, to me. What, what you got? Okay, I'm going to first go with jeans. Just jeans? I know. You can't wear jeans? No, and I love jeans. And I specifically love jeans with holes in them and rips and tears and all. Like, I love that stuff. <laughs> but I, Okay, I, I'm with you now. Jeans. Yeah, you can't wear jeans. Don't wear jens. <laughs> all right, well, don't wear jeans. So don't, so, all right, what else you got? We got don't wear jeans. Don't wear jeans. Um, I would also say um, not to wear anything that's either too loose or too tight or revealing. Okay. So you're not there to look sexy. You're not sexy secretary. You're not muscle guy. You're not either of that, you know. So just your clothes should be fitted, like your size, not too small or too large. Okay, I got you. Um, make sure your clothes fit. Yes, I would say make sure your clothes fit. I know fit. how that goes. It's tight sometimes. It's hard. <laughs> sometimes the wardrobe ain't like it needs to be. So your clothes got to fit, no jeans. What yeah. else you got? Um, I would also say that you need to stay away from anything like you mentioned earlier, people wearing shirts with bad paraphernalia, I'm going to just say on them uh, you know whatever the t-shirts that you wear you assume represent what you think or believe possibly so the guy that says i smoke weed he don't need to wear that shirt uh, to court no okay I, i've seen that shirt i know you have. I, I get high all the time right yeah 412 you can't wear it okay no. so no jeans make sure your clothes fit mm -hmm. don't wear anything that got cuss words or drugs or anything right. crazy on them. what else you got right. that's three i need two okay. more give me two more good ones okay um hmm i would say well, I know this isn't part of attire, but just to be well-groomed. Okay. And that potentially could mean, uh, you know, obviously a haircut, shave, um, you know, your <laughs> hair, whether that's a, a nice fitting wig or good weave or your hair, whatever the case may be, just oh it God. needs to be, be tamed. <laughs> well, I got you. I got you. For lack of a better phrase, if you have tattoos that are visible, if there's a way to cover them up, if you have per piercings that you can remove. Okay. Things like that. So just looking conservative, quite frankly. Okay. So I know for some people that's not yourself. their nature. Gotcha. But for that environment, you need to look conservative. Grooming yourself and kind of being conservative. I need one more. Give me one more good okay. one. Okay. One more. Um, Give me one more good one. Okay. Uh, this isn't dress. Is okay. this okay? Yeah, you tell me. It's yours. You're the image consultant. Tell me about it. I would say not having a, you shouldn't have a bad attitude. Ooh, talk about that. Um, if you're going to a courtroom, there's a level of humility, I think, that you should have about yourself. Um, so that, because even how, how nicely you're dressed, how well you're presented, if your attitude is bad, that's not a good look. Now, if you had like two seconds to tell me out of the, the guy and the girl that we had, two mm -hmm. things that you can just, they just need to fix. Okay. The, the, the guy and the girl that we showed you earlier, mm -hmm. here, what two things that they just have to fix before they can ever come to the courtroom looking the way they look? Yes, I'm going to take from my list previously, and I'm uh -huh. going to say grooming, uh -huh. whether that's the shave, the haircut, the hair, you know, getting your hair done. Right. And the conservative dress. Right. Definitely, for the two of them. They're not going to bed, they're not getting in the shower, so they shouldn't look like they are. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. So, Ms. Price, if we want to get in contact with you, how would they actually do that? Do you have a phone number or a website or email any way they can get up with you? Yes, I do. My phone number is 704-560-1025. Say it again. Again. All right. 704-560-1025. All right. And my website is www.pspimageconsulting.com. You see how she did that? PSPImageConsulting.com. <laughs> we got it right. Look, Ms. Price, I really appreciate you for taking the time to talk with us. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> I appreciate you. And look, we'll be back again at these messages. All the evidence is in, and now it's time for the final arguments of the lawyers. When I hear those words, I feel like a baseball player in the bottom of the ninth with two outs, and I'm up to bat. When I hear those words, I feel like a basketball player with three seconds on the clock and the game is on the line. When I hear those words, I feel like a quarterback in the fourth quarter on a game-winning drive, two minutes left to go. When I hear those words, I feel like I'm in a championship fight. I need a knockout to win. When I hear those words, there's one thought that goes in my mind. There's one thought that plays over and over again. There's one phrase that I continuously hear. And that phrase is, let's go to work. You know, sometimes a burger, fry, and a drink from the dollar menu just won't do? Come on down to Main Street Chicken and Barbecue. We carry the food that makes you feel mmm, mmm, good.
good, starting with our St. Louis style ribs, turkey wings, barbecue turkey, turkey barbecue, candy yams, collards, cabbage, and more. So yes, come on down to 3733 North Main Street, Farmville, North Carolina, and we also do catering. So give us a call at 252-531-7587, Main Street Chicken and Barbecue. We're back. We're back with a young man from earlier today, and man, what was what, your name? You Mojo Powell. Mr. Powell, yes. I'm gonna tell you, man, you look a thousand and eighty-four billion times better. What? what so what did you do? What did you do? Well, basically, what I did, I went and got a shave, haircut, and um, actually changed my wardrobe. And you look a whole lot better, man. I'm telling you, it's amazing. I've seen some people that were looking the way you were looking, wow. and you look. Uh, it's amazing how much better you look. You, you look more presentable, man. You look, look, it look good. What type of image do you think you were actually showing when you came to court looking the way you were looking before? The image that I was showing was an image of me not caring about myself. Right. And that's what society is judged, is, each individual is judged on within society, how you look, how you, that's the first thing that they judge you on, how you look. Well, I tell you what, if you ever go to court, I don't care what you got going on, a speeding ticket, this is how I want you to go to court, man. You're looking real good. I appreciate you for being on the show. Right. Thank you very have, much. Have a good one. You too. We'll be back, y'all. Some people call this place a sacred place. Some people call this place the halls of justice. Some people simply call this place a courtroom. But to me, this place is a coliseum. And I, I am, I am a, gladiator. a gladiator. Just like all gladiators, I remember the great men that came before me. When I walk into the Coliseum, I look at my challenge. I look at my opponent. I look at the obstacle that stands before me. And then I say, let's go to work. We're back, y'all. We got this young lady from this morning. Oh my God, you look a hunt. It's amazing. <laughs> what, what's, what's your name? Anthony Amalus. Miss Mullen, what, what in the world did they do to you? Because you don't look like the same <laughs> person. I mean, I saw you when you walked in, I was like, is that her? <laughs> oh my, what, what did you do? Well, first they did my hair and kind of fixed me up a little bit. They gave me new clothes and kind of something that looks presentable to the judge. And Ooh, I just. But that's a whole, oh my goodness. <laughs> so look, the, the way you came in with that stuff that you had on before, that you, that you should never wear ever again, <laughs> that stuff that you had like that, what type of image or what type of thought process you think people would have if they see you like that? Well, they probably thought I didn't care. They're probably just like, oh, she's just in here because she has to be. But I mean, it was just. Well, well, I'm telling you right now, if you ever, I don't care if you get a speeding ticket, if you get charged with loss, I don't care what you get charged with, if you are suing someone, this is the way you need to come to court. God, you look a whole lot better. And they did your hair. Let me ask you, think they can do something? They can work. They can work. They can work with that. Anything. Yeah, I ain't got nothing to pull up on, yes. but. They'll look, put something up there. They'll put something up there. Well, look, I really yes. appreciate you look so much better. I mean, Thank it's, you. It's amazing. And anytime you come to court, anytime you do anything professional, this is how you do it. I appreciate you being on the show. Thank you. Now you be safe, all right? You too. All Every morning, I prepare my mind and my body for the hard work that lies ahead. To get the results that my clients deserve and the results that my clients need, it takes hard work and dedication. And dedication. At the Clemens Law Firm, we are more than willing to put in the hard work. We are more than willing to show our dedication because at the Clemens Law Firm we understand we believe and we know that bad things really do happen to good people let's go to work
in the game of life, we have many challenges. Sometimes our opponent thinks that they have us beat. They have us beat. Check. Sometimes they think they have us exactly where they want us. But then we make the right strategic move. Checkmate. Despite how bad the situation may appear, hire a law firm that makes the right move. I've heard people say you, you look like you're drunk, you walk like you're drunk, you talk like you're drunk, you're probably drunk. You look like a duck, you talk like a duck, you quack like a duck, you're probably a duck. The way you appear means a lot. Somebody once said perception is reality. You need to make sure that you're careful on how you are perceived when you walk into court. If you walk in with your pants hanging way down here and you look like a thug, people are going to think that you're a thug. It doesn't matter if you have a 5.0 GPA. It doesn't matter if you have a master's degree from Harvard. If you look like a thug, they're going to treat you like a thug. If you come in with all certain colors on, the only thing they see you with certain colors on, you look like a criminal, they're going to treat you like a criminal. You need to understand the way you dress means a lot. When you walk into a courtroom, respect the courtroom. It is a professional setting. The way you look can affect not only how the DA sees you or how the judge sees you, but if you're at trial, it can affect how the jury sees you. You have to realize that what people see affects their judgment. So take time and dress yourself appropriately when you walk in the courtroom. Do not walk in there looking like I before us. Do not do that. I want you to come in like the people did afterwards. It really matters. Thank you, and y'all be safe.